Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're actually outside the workshop on a, on a different project here. I'm doing a pig roast. And this is just a quick video of how to and the equipment that I use uh, to do pig roast. So here you can see I've got a, you know, the whole rotisserie unit. And in the back there there's a little enclosure made out of cinder blocks and fire brick to deflect the heat onto the pig. Um, now there's different ways of doing this, you know, there's probably better ways even, um, but you know, this is what we've been doing and it works really well. Uh, I've used this for over 30 years now and never had a problem. Okay, the first step in getting everything started is getting a fire I'm using just a torch to get everything going. You want to make sure you get the fire going good before you uh, start the pig roast. So here's a view of the wood pile that I started with and just to give you an idea of how much wood we're going to use to do this. Here's the pig is purchased from, you know, a butcher shop. Um, so the first step is to insert the spit rod through the back end and up through the pig and to the, through the mouth. And this pig is about 40 pounds, you know, as I said, you can buy it from a butcher shop. You just tell them you need a pig for a pig roast and you give them the weight that you want and they do a good job of cleaning it up and all you really got to do is maybe salt it a little if that's your preference uh, you know before getting going so once we get the spit rod in through the pig the next step is to use these rods uh, that go through the spit rod you know and you want to get them into nice solid areas of the pig so you can see here we're using a hammer but that makes sure that you're you know through completely and then you want to use some butcher's twine and you tie them through the rods and make sure you snug everything up nice and tight. You don't want anything flopping around and you definitely don't want anything coming loose while, you know, the pig is uh, cooking over the fire. So here you can see we got everything tied off nice in the different areas and we're ready to put everything uh, over the fire. So like I said, just make sure that everything's nice and tight. You definitely don't want anything coming loose when uh, you get cooking. So the next step here is we, you know, put it near the fire, not too close initially. Start out a little further away, let everything kind of preheat. You don't want things raw on the inside. So just start away and you can see the intensity of the fire and kind of that's what you want to keep throughout the whole process. So here's just a quick overview of the rotisserie unit and I'll give you more details at the end of the video on uh, what the components are. But here you basically got a small gear drive motor um, with a chain uh, connection and some support bearings uh, for the whole mechanism. So again I'll give you more details at the end of the video if anyone's interested in uh, you know, those kind of things. Um, here, two hours into the process, uh, what we'd like to do is just get some butter uh, all over the surface of the pig. This really helps with um, how it cooks and how the, the skin turns out, the surface of the pig. So you can see here, butter's distributed. And let's do a quick temperature check. I've never done this before, actually. I'm just curious, um, how hot does it get on the surface? And I don't even know how accurate this is, but I was getting temperature readings about 220 to 250 degrees at the surface of the pig throughout the process. So here we are about four and a half hours into the process and we've got a thermometer. You want to put them in the thickest parts of the pig, the front behind the front legs and the rear legs down inside. And what we're usually looking for is a temperature around about 100 and 70 to 180 degrees uh, at this point. You don't want to undercook the pig obviously but overcooking it makes it very dry also so you want to be just in that right area. So let's see here we did we're getting close we're about 170 I think you know we'll let it go a little bit more and uh, then it'll be done. So here after about five hours we've got the pig off the rotisserie and the rods and we'll take out the spit rod out of it too. Um, here we've got a contraption for cutting the pig which doesn't work really that well but really you want to cut it into 
halves, quarters, and then just divide it up into different portions of the pig. And you can see here we've got it in a tray with all the different portions ready to eat. So that's the wood pile afterward. So here's the rotisserie unit overall view and in the back end what we've got is you know the drive motor that we talked about it's a gear motor and I'll give you some more details here um, the spit rod and the rear support no bearing in the rear you know it just floats back there on that little uh, cupped piece and you can adjust if you want the uh, you know overall height of everything now the the main spit rods inch and a sixteenth diameter about 87 inches long stainless steel obviously you want everything that's touching the pig stainless um, there's holes in the the spit rod there and let's see the center height from the ground is about 16 inches Okay, on the rod itself, you know, what we've got, there's holes, quarter inch diameter holes, spaced about six inches apart, and they're rotated 90 degrees from each other. And the first hole is located about 12 inches from the base unit. So the gear motor, it's a Dayton gear motor, and you can see the specs, you can pause on it and see. I think this is the slowest one they have. Um, like I said, you, it'd probably be ideal to slow it down a little more, but we're using a speed control um, to get it to the right speed. Like I said, during the roasting, probably around 2 RPM, so we're using this Dayton speed control that's matched for the motor. There's the model number of the speed control to get it to the right RPM. So the end here, we've got it counterboard down with a cross-drilled hole to couple to the uh, main spit shaft. And the table itself, it's about 13 inches by almost 18 and about 14 inches tall. So this seems to work well for a base. And the rear support unit it's about 18 inches by let's see, almost a foot and you know center height to match and that's adjustable if you need it if you have uneven terrain uh, you can vary that center height alright guys so that was a quick overview of the whole process like I said there's different ways of doing this there's probably some better ways uh, and different types. You, know, you can do it over wood, over coal. Um, some people have enclosed units. So this is just the way that I've done it. You know, we've done it for over, this is over 30 years old unit and people have borrowed it and used it and it's still holding up working well. So um, that's it for this video. Definitely if you're interested in different kinds of projects, you can see the range of stuff I'm doing. Uh, stay tuned to the channel and subscribe. Um, you know, I do a range of different things. This is just one, so definitely hope to see you guys soon.